Akron Athletics presents Zips Weekly with Joe Moorhead. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling and Akron Hilton Fairlawn. And now your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a brand new edition of Zips Weekly with head football coach Joe Moorhead. And if we learned anything from Saturday night's game at Infosys and Stadium, you never leave an Akron game early. How about that? The zip score with about a minute left. Recover that fumble. Go in and score, and they win it 24-21. to So right now, Akron is 1-1 one one as we head down to Kentucky on Saturday night to take on the Kentucky Wildcats. That will be a 7-30 kickoff. And, Coach, I didn't get a chance to talk to you after the game, but I'm assuming <laughs> the emotions of a head football coach in a situation like that Go from down to up and all over the place. Yeah, I just didn't get this gray hair by accident. So, <laughs> so 26 years of ups and downs and more wins and losses. But, you know, uh, sometimes the ball bounces the right way. You know, last year Central Michigan and Buffalo didn't bounce right. for us. And so you're never going to get upset with a uh, win. They all count the same way. And, you know, just excited our kids fought for a full 60 minutes. Yeah, those things seem to even up over the course of a coaching yeah. career. I'm sure you've seen a lot of those. But before we take a look at the highlights, Coach, let's talk about a few things from Saturday. We saw three different quarterbacks. We're not going to ask you the start is going to be at, down at uh, Kentucky, but you've got three different type quarterbacks. What does one of them have to do to jump up and, and take charge in the quarterback room? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that you, you, you've seen, uh, you know, throughout the course of the first two games is a little bit of a level of inconsistency. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's DJ who can run and throw, Jeff who's more of a traditional uh, thrower, or Taj who's more of a, a, a runner, right. we want a guy that's going to get in there to be able to move the ball uh, and put it in the end zone and do it with consistency. Yeah, we played without uh, Nate Williams. He got banged up a little bit, I think, in that Temple game. They had to rearrange that offensive line a little bit. Yeah. That's still a work in progress, I think. Yeah, it, it, offensively, that's the area where we're seeking, um, you know, to find the right combination and, uh, you know, to be able to do a better job uh, run blocking and protecting the passer and, you know, a lot of moving parts. You know, hopefully we get Keelan Davis back this week yeah. as well as Nate. Uh, but, yeah, it's area we, we need to shore up yeah. and, and have that unit play better. Exactly. Right now, let's go back to InfoCision Stadium on Saturday night. Watch the game. Pretty good crowd. A lot of students there. Thanks for coming out on Saturday. The Zips win the toss. And, Coach, you defer. And some good things are going to happen early, just like they did at Temple. Yeah, you know, we, we kicked into the wind and, uh, you know, let that, that return get out a little bit more than we wanted. But it, as you're going to see here right off the bat, C.J. Nunley with, with a couple of sacks and almost a third, uh, you know, highlighted by his, his uh, was just named Mac, Mac Conference Defensive Player of the Week. So the, uh, we've improved in a lot of areas on our team since last year, but, but none more than our, our, our defensive front and in our overall defensive unit. Yeah, CJ was all over the place uh, early on that first uh, Braves possession. You could see there coming from the middle. And now, young man out of Penn Hills High School in Pittsburgh. Noel Roach is going to get the block, and that's a big play for that young man. Absolutely hometown kid, and you can't say enough about Noel. You know, he's really worked while he's waited, uh, understood his role, and had an opportunity and made a huge play. Unfortunately, we get great field position, Coach. we got to settle for a field goal. Yeah, we were the beneficiary of, of positive field position throughout the game, and, you know, offensively, same thing. We need to put that one in the end zone rather than settle in for three. But, uh, you yeah, know, you can't come away with three there. You need seven. Yeah, that was a 22-yard field goal by Noah Perez, and the Zips lead early 3 to nothing. And for the second straight week, Coach, uh, defense is going to play well and going to run the football a little bit in the game, but maybe not the way you like. Yeah, we, defensively, we, we had three straight uh, three-and-out possessions, which, w which was awesome. Offensively, we came in and, you know, moved the ball a bit, uh, had some penalties on a couple drives that got us behind the sticks, but, but same thing, see a great catch there by TJ. Uh, you know, move the ball, but once again, not with enough consistency and got to find a way to put it in the end zone. Looks like that Drake Anderson with a nice carry. You are alternating the running back, Coach, and getting pretty good carries out of both of them. Yeah, we, we got to get those guys some more touches, and, and a lot of that is, you know, contingent upon our ability to run block better. But both of those guys are talented. They do great things, you know, when there's room and the ball in our hands, and we got we to gotta find ways to, to be more productive at, at that position. Usually had those defensive backs in that tip drill. That time it happened offensively. Yeah. You saw a big play. Yeah, Miles to TJ there. That was a, that was a good uh, good awareness. Again, their pressure coming, and uh, a lot of those zip defenders. We're going to talk about it later in the show, but a lot of those guys had really good games. Yeah, well, Joshua Jackson, another junior college defensive end out of East Mississippi, 
played for Coach Stevens, who's really done a nice job excelling at rushing the passer right now, uh, working to improve his run defense. But, you know, once again, another one of those, those JUCOs or portal guys that we've got in that defensive front who've been playing lights, lights out for the first two weeks. Yeah, Jackson, uh, 6'2", 245, a, a junior. So he's got a lot of football to be played here at Akron. Yep. Iron's going to throw it out to Alex Adams, who had a pretty good game. He's coming back in form. Yeah, we got to keep getting him touches, and uh, you know, got great playmakers at the wide receiver position. We got to you know hold up in protection and find ways to get him the ball in the open. Again, the defense with some big hits, and Darian Lewis especially. We're going to talk about him later. I thought he had a great game. Yeah, a ton of production, local guy. You know, good to see a kid who decided to stay home and play his ball here, find a bunch of success. Sif still leading three to nothing, so we watched play midway in that second quarter. Again, the Akron defense swarming to the football, and Braves not getting anything done offensively. And again, a lot of big hits on that defensive side. Yeah, really only gave up one touchdown drive in the in the in the uh, first half. But uh, you know, Coach Tibbetsar and his staff did a great job constructing the game plan. The kids had a good week of practice. Right overall, I think we need to continue to improve in that area, but definitely came out and. You know, executed at a high level. That was Darian Lewis with the big play, and this is uh, Lingard catching the ball out of the backfield. And once he gets in the open field, coach, he can do some good things. Yeah, we have to find space for him. He's a, he's a talented player. You see, we made the change of quarterback here. Jeff came in, went five for five for 72 yards, and uh, got the ball to Alex for a touchdown. Good hustle play by Gatings here off of the strip. And then uh, we're going to see this thing go to go to Alex here, break a few tackles, get some good downfield blocking and kind of do what Alex does, find a way to put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, he got nailed. Of course, that young man from Morgan State was, I think, thrown out of the game for targeting. Yeah, he got, but he, watch his pop a right, here. right there, comes out of there and Comes out down the sidelines and scores. Great play. Great play by Alex. Good throw by Jeff, good protection. Uh, Perez coming in, does a good job with the PAT. Yeah, and Perez with the PAT and Akron suddenly in the lead, 10-7. to 7. Now late in the first half. They try and move the football coach, and that's a mistake because we pick it off and go in the end zone and get momentum at halftime. Yeah, great play by Devontae, and that came off of a, a penalty on their touchdown. Uh, moved the kickoff back. Uh, we got them pinned, and uh, you know they decided to throw, and you know, Devontae made a great play reading the, uh, the switch release there, and we got him the turnover tire. I'll tell you, he got two tires, Coach. He got the turnover tire, and he got the touchdown yeah, tire. And the very rarely, be strong yeah, to get the very that. rarely seen double, double tire. Uh, <laughs> award there. Well, I love that. A lot of enthusiasm on the sidelines with the uh, the turnover tire, the touchdown tie, tire, and that's what makes college football so much fun, little things like that. Yeah, you know, we, you know, the, the rubber city. Sure. Uh, and, um, you know, really you see the thrones and the, and the change exactly. and all that stuff, and we kind of want to embrace this town and this school's, you know, blue collar mentality yeah. and black ground, background and say, hey, what, what better way than a, than, a, than a tire from the junkyard? And we sent Kyle Foster over and he grabbed a couple and, uh, yeah, I think the kids have really embraced it. Yeah, I think Kyle's been used to those junkyards. Now, yeah. man, I'll tell you what, it's a good one down in West Virginia. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, we're going to take a break. It's at halftime. The Zips leading 17-7. to seven. We're back right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here in the show this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab and in the community, and the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly with head football coach Joe Moorhead watching highlights from Akron's big win over Morgan State Saturday, 24-21. Let's go right back to the highlights right now and pick things up. It's going to be an exciting ending. If you didn't see it, didn't hear it, stay with us. You're going to watch it again right here on Zips Weekly. Can't get anything moving offensively, Coach, but we do get a great uh, kickoff return by uh, young Mr. Hester. Yeah, he's done a great job. You know, obviously we had a, you know, another big one that we put on the ground, but, but Blake's been a, a stalwart on kickoff return and all of our special teams. And 
you know, was able to provide us with a very good field position. He's got to be excited, an Ashland, Kentucky kid going back home on Saturday night. Yeah, he's definitely excited. Opportunity to play an SEC team uh, for all the kids on our roster, it's a uh, you know, huge opportunity. Highlights early in the second half, zips up 17-7, to seven, and again, uh, coach your defense really playing well and kind of gang tackling. You like to see one big hit and a lot of help. Yeah, and, and the great thing is we've been able to um, – you know, create some depth and competition at, at all the positions. So uh, we have some good substitution patterns going on and keeping guys fresh as much as we can, and it's allowed our guys to play at a high level. That was Darian Lewis again on a pressure from the right side. Really, Morgan State capitalized on a couple interceptions, Coach, but uh, we're going to see a big ending coming up here in a little bit, but... Yeah, we gave him short fields. Uh, two, the two interceptions resulted in uh, plus 13 and plus 31 um, field, field uh, position, with which were both resulted in touchdowns. So we got to keep him to three or zero there. And definitely, you know, it's an anomaly to turn the ball over five times, three on offense and two on special teams and win the game. But, you know, we, we found a way to do it. Lingard over the left side, and now you're going to come back same side with Drake Anderson. Yeah, as you mentioned, we got to find a way to get those guys the ball in some more open space because – you know, they're able to, you know, do some nice things with their speed and athleticism. Anderson, only 5'9", but he's 190, Coach, and sometimes he's hard to see back there. Yeah, he is. And, and here's the story of the second half, moving the ball between the 20s. Yeah. You know, uh, Josiah Gatings with his best game uh, as, a, uh, as a zip, you know, find some production, but kind of got ourselves stalled in the red zone. Yeah, Josiah Gatings had a really good game, probably his best game as a zip. Yeah, absolutely. Now you see the score. It's going to stay that way. It's 21 to 17, Morgan State. We're playing early in the fourth quarter, and the Zips are going to get a big pick. A young man that uh, played good football, KJ Martin, the transfer from West Virginia. Yeah, missed the first half with the uh, with the targeting penalty from the last game, but uh, found a way to get a pick in the end zone there and set us up with good field position again. Morgan State again trying to move the football, and again that zip defense playing very good. Trying to run up the middle. We didn't talk much about uh, the young man from New Mexico State right in the middle. Lama Lavea did a great job holding the point. He and Teray, uh, you know, once again, helping stop the run, you know, providing a pass rush. And, you know, just like I said, once again, I think the defense played two very good games so far. That may have been Undercuffler's best throw right there yeah, between a, a couple defenders yeah. to Alex Adams. And same thing. Got ourselves rolling, you know, an 80-yard drive and unfortunately ended, ended up stalled and with the turnover. So we got to find a way to finish these drives off on offense. We did see Noah Perez try a 50-yard field goal. Is that pretty much on the edge of his range? Yeah, anything more than that, we're going to go with Dante. It had the length, but not the, uh, not the accuracy. But, yeah, about 50 is about where, he, where he's good to. Another pass outside to uh, Gathings. And now they're going to hit, uh, I think, Daniel George there. Yeah, down to the 10. We've got to find a way to put the ball in the end zone here and take the lead and you know, eliminate all of the, all the drama at the end. Talking about drama, we're going to see it right now. Akron is down 21 to 17. People starting to leave the stadium, but those that uh, left did not see one of the more dramatic zip wins. There is C.J. Nunley stripping the football, and coming out of nowhere is Brian McCoy, the young kid out of uh, Joliet, Illinois, and that's worth another watch, Coach. Absolutely. Had a minute nine on the clock. We had two times le timeouts left. Banged them quick. I think uh, there was 59 seconds left on the third down play, and. You know, the kids kept fighting, and C.J. made an unbelievable strip. Brian picked it up and you know, put that thing in the end zone and, you know, took the lead. How good a look did you get at that, Coach? You're a long way from away from that one. Yeah, all I saw was a scoop and score. I didn't see that C.J. had created the fumble. But, uh, and yeah, after was, that, you looked as if there was any flags. No, yeah. Well, my concern was, were they going to review it and say the kid's knee was down? Uh, but, yeah, Coach Coach Wilson did an unbelievable job with his with his, uh, with his his team. You know, it's a top 25 FCS unit. That's right. And, you know, uh, you know, and he wins a win. So exactly. we're, we're excited. At the end of the day, it's a game of inches. You could be 2-0. and oh, You could be 0-2. Oh we're right in the middle at 1-1. One and one. Uh, and, it, and it's, you know, one where we showed a lot of resiliency, a lot of, uh, a lot of determination, and, you know, found a way to get the win. There you go. Zips win at 24-21. We're going to take a break, come back, and talk about some of the young men that played well Saturday night right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. 
It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter? Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Well, each week at this time, we're going to ask the coach uh, some of the young men that played exceptionally well for him this past Saturday. And coach, we got a long list of guys we're going to talk about. And right at the top of the list is a young man, C.J. Nunley, who is the Mid-American Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Two sacks early, a strip late to help the Zips win it. Great game by that young man. Unbelievable, unbelievable job by C.J. Uh, had a huge game, uh, big production, and uh, just a, a great job by our staff and, and Coach Wartman identifying him as a junior college prospect. You know, bringing them in and uh, you know, giving them an opportunity, getting them developed, and you know, great to see that all come to fruition. Exactly. Well, your linebackers also played well. Uh, Brian McCoy and Tavius Fish. I think they had 23 tackles between them. Yeah, both guys we recruited. You know, Fish a JUCO guy, Brian a high school kid, and we've talked about that in the yeah. past. Just never abandoning the foundational uh, development aspect of your program sure. by going strictly JUCO or portal. And Brian's a guy that, you know, got his feet wet last year, and now he's you know thrust into a starting position with Bubba's departure and he's taking full advantage of it. Secondary, I thought, played well, too, because especially Darian Lewis. I think he had nine tackles. He had two picks back there. That development in the, in the secondary was key this year. Yeah, he's, he plays our uh, nickel position and uh, gets the opportunity to play some zone, play some man, you know, blitz off of the edge, and uh, did all three of those things well in the game. Talk about special teams, Coach. Uh, Noel Roach, a young man from Penn Hills High School over in Pittsburgh. We mentioned him early. Uh, has been in the program a couple of years. It was good to see those guys have success with the block punt. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a lost art in this day and age. You know, yeah. kids, uh, and, and it's understandable. They, they want their opportunities and they want to play. But uh, Noel's done a great job, you know, working on scout team, getting his opportunity on special teams. And, you know, uh, now we're going to see his role increased. And, yeah. uh, you know, I know no one's more excited than he yeah. is. Blake Hester, young man, had two good returns. He did fumble one of them, coach, but again, He's fearless back there. You want him to have the football in his hands. Yeah, he, like I said, a core four guy on all, all units. Um, you know, preferred walk-on player who really kind of exemplifies what you, what you and typifies the, the, the characteristics of a guy you want on your team. And you, you, you wish you had a, a, a roster of 110 Blake yeah. Esters. Wide receiver group continues to be the strength of the football team. A young man jumped up and had a great game on Sarah Josiah Gaddings out of uh, the state of Georgia. He's a guy that has tremendous potential, I think. Yeah, he, he uh, you know, really came on strong in spring ball and in fall camp. You know, started the season well last year. You know, got an injury versus Michigan State, so he missed the remainder of the year. But between Josiah, you know, Alex had another big game, and then DJ's kind of had a quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Daniel George has kind of had yeah. a quiet uh, 100 yards the past two weeks. So, you know, as we've talked about all along, uh, you know, our receiving core is the strength of our offensive unit. Mentioned uh, Nate Williams did not play last week. Hopefully he'll be back Saturday, but he's a, a young guy that kind of anchors that offensive line. It's tough to play without him. Yeah, he's, he's a leader of that group, and he could play tackle or guard, and then losing Keelan Davis as well during camp, so hopefully we're able to get him back soon. So we were playing with a bunch of young guys, some guys out of position, uh, but yeah, no excuse. You know, you got to you know find the right unit and yeah. you know get them to um, you know play productive and physical and uh, you know precise football, but, but hopefully getting those two guys back soon will help us. Coach, you've always been good during this segment uh, last year and this year already, pointing out young guys in the program, maybe the Zips aren't aware of, some future stars. Who's jumping out at you right now after maybe a couple weeks of practice? Yeah, <laughs> I know it uh, gets repetitive, but the, but the three wide receivers that we brought in that are true freshmen, uh, Adrian Norton, who played a little bit yeah. in the game, uh, Gene Louis out of New York City, and then Paul Davis out of Georgia are going to be three really, really good players in, in the program. And on the uh, defensive side of the ball, Cam Cheatham, defensive end for Pittsburgh, uh, Melvin Spriggs, linebacker, and we got some talent on the back end too. So those guys are really showing up on scout team so far. Yeah, glad to hear that because fans were always asking me, what about the young guys? I said, well, I'll ask the coach. And as always, he comes through with some names to remember as far as future zip football players and stars. We're going to take a break. When we come back, 
We're going to talk a little bit about the Kentucky Wildcats as the coach goes back into the Southeastern Conference. That'll be a 7.30 kickoff down in Lexington. We'll come back and talk about the Wildcats right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, now it's time for our weekly scouting report, brought to you as always by the Hilton Akron Fairlawn Hotel. Big game. The Zips head down to Kentucky on Saturday night. Southeastern Conference football. The Kentucky Wildcats right now are 2-0. Had a nice opening week win over Ball State. Then last week had an emotional game with in-state rival Eastern Kentucky. But right now the Wildcats are 2-0 and playing well. Yeah, Coach Stoops has done an unbelievable job with the program. You know, Youngstown guy, Carter Mooney guy, Vince Morrow, a bunch of Ohio ties on the oh, yeah. uh, staff. But, you know, you got to give credit to Kentucky's administration. You know, they gave uh, Coach Stoops time to build his program and, uh, you know, get his culture, get his players, get his talent. And he's done a, done a phenomenal job. So anytime you play an SEC team, it's going to be a huge challenge. You know, gone against them twice. We're 1-1, one one, had a long day at Kroger Field in 18, but yeah. we were able to get the win in Starkville in 19. Yep. Coach Stoops has been there since 2013. He's the winningest all-time coach in Kentucky history. As we said, the Stoops brothers coming from Youngstown. I think it's Cardinal Mooney is their background, I think, over in Youngstown. Yeah, that whole Mooney crew there. That's there's, right. a, there's a long lineage of, uh, you know, successful coaches and, and players out of that school. Yeah, they were voted, I think, fourth in the uh, Southeastern Conference Eastern Division. As everybody knows, Southeastern Conference, maybe the best college football in the country. They have a young man, a transfer quarterback coach, who coming out in the portal, a lot of people felt he was the best quarterback available. Yeah, coming out of NC State, yeah. you know, kid originally from New Jersey who I recruited uh, when I was at Penn State. So uh, very talented, um, you know, a little bit more of a thrower than a runner, but can definitely beat you with his legs. You know, big, strong, physical, you know, SEC offensive line. You know, Coach Cohen, uh, their offensive coordinator, you know, back this year had spent some time with the Rams in the NFL, had been the coordinator for Will Levis's, uh, you know, biggest year there. So uh, they, they definitely present a lot of uh, issues on offense from a personnel and a yeah. scheme standpoint. Yeah, Devin Levy is the uh, young man's uh, name, the quarterback. The transfer is 24 out of 38 for 299 yards and four TDs against Eastern Kentucky. Looking at that game, Coach, that was 7-7 seven to seven at halftime, Eastern Kentucky and uh, Kentucky, and that's a big rivalry. You can imagine how pumped up those Eastern Kentucky kids were. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Eastern blocked the punt early and got field position. That's how they got on the board first. And you know, Kentucky was moving the ball and kind of, you know, just had just had yeah. trouble getting, getting you know, converting those into points. And uh, But, yeah, credit to Eastern Kentucky. They played their hearts out and, you know, kept it uh, as, uh, you know, within – within scoring range in the, in, the, in the fourth, and Kentucky was able to close it out. At Kentucky also has a transfer running back, uh, came in from Vanderbilt, uh, Ray Davis. So when you're playing the Southeastern Conference, they're always going to have talent on both sides of the football. That's a given. <laughs> yeah, I uh, you know, was taking my youngest son around to uh, camps this summer, and Kentucky was one of the schools that you know, wanted to see him. So Coach Morrow you know, took us around, and we saw their you know, team working out for summer workouts. and. They, uh, they sure as heck look like an SEC team. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna, definitely going to be a huge challenge. Once again, the coach has done a great job developing, you know, identifying talent and, de and developing them. Kentucky defense gave up 311 uh, total yards, total offense, Eastern Kentucky. But uh, they're getting a little better each week. They're going to be stingy, I'm, I'm guessing, on Saturday night. Yeah, Coach White, their defensive coordinator, does an unbelievable job. You know, they base out of a three-man front, but they'll get to some four-down stuff. But, uh, you know, I think three guys over 300 pounds in the front. You know, yeah. their Will Linebacker is a guy that's an NFL player along with their rush end. And, uh, you know, a lot of length and athleticism on the back end, you know, mixing up the split safety coverages and the single high stuff and some simulated pressures. But yeah, but Coach White's one of the best. Coach, uh, good to see you back in the Southeastern Conference on Saturday night down in Kentucky. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for watching. Always remember, 
Go Zips. Thanks for watching Zips Weekly with Joe Moorhead. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling and Akron Hilton Fairlawn. We'll see you next week. And as always, go Zips. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.